Hello and good afternoon from the Bright Spot Global Headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Uh, we've got a fast-paced webinar today covering the top 20 incentive travel destinations. And while we say top, we struggled a little bit with what the right adjective was for this list, whether it was best or trending or bargains or hot or new. So you're going to see a mixed list here today. We invite questions or comments while we're going along. You can enter that in the chat box and our uh, marketing administrator will be keeping track of that. So today's speakers are first, I'm Mike May, president of Brightspot, and I'm also the 2019 chairman of the Incentive Research Foundation. Also have Michael Butler here. Hello. Michael's uh, with the Site Global Research and Education Committee. And then Julie Blank. Hello. Another one of our strategic account directors and is also active with the Site Texas Board. I would say about each of Michael and Julie that they both have over 10 years of incentive travel experts. So when we say we have the gurus on the webinar, we really, really do. A little audience participation opportunity here. Whoever sends in the best question or the best comment, we're going to make a uh, we're going to make a decision about who we think is best in the independent opinions of our marketing manager. <laughs> So we're going to dive right into the list of the top 20, and we are going to start with Umbria and Puglia. And Julie, I think that's you, right? That's me. So I do not believe that these are in any particular order that we put these together, but clearly we did not save the best for last because I love all things Italy. And while there's definitely a time and a place for your Rome, Florence, Venice programs, um, I think kind of smaller or more well-traveled groups might really want a more intimate Italian experience, and Umbria and Puglia definitely deliver on that. They're two very different regions of the country, um, but each kind of with their own charm and appeal. Umbria is often referred to as the green heart of Italy because it's basically landlocked on all sides, but a lot like its neighbor to the north, Tuscany, uh, this region is super grape friendly, so wine plays a really large role in the culture here. Um, in general, this is both of these are going to be really laid back and relaxed Italian experiences, but really with some really unique uh, offerings. One of my favorite places to visit in this region uh, is the small town of Orvieto. So it's this little community that's kind of perched high up on a cliff with just magnificent views of the region. Um, a gorgeous Duomo and 1,200 underground caves and passages that you can kind of walk through. So I think that's really unique and kind of cool. Um, there's a lot of small boutique properties in this area, but uh, my favorite is in the city of Assisi, and it's called the Nun Relay. It's really the 12th century Santa Caterina Monastery that's been remodeled in this real contemporary way. Uh, it's just a beautiful merging of kind of the old and new that I really highly recommend for smaller groups there, maybe 30, no more than 30. Uh, in contrast, there's Puglia, which is kind of the spur of the Italian boot, if you will. And it's really surrounded by water on three sides. So an ideal destination for maybe a beach loving group that's looking for a little something extra you maybe can't get in the Caribbean. Um, this region is really most famous for food, so like 40% of the olive oil and pasta consumed in the country is from Puglia, so food is to Puglia what wine is to Umbria, but they do have the capital city of Bari, which offers some great hotel options, shopping and nightlife. Uh, my favorite property here is the Rocco Forte. It's the Masseria Tora Maiza, which is a mouthful. Um, but a lot of smaller boutique, really high-end options here. Um, I think these are two lesser-known destinations, but really two that shouldn't be missed. Good. So kind of second tier in Italy. Yeah. Michael, number two. Julie always gets the best. I do. <laughs> Man, Italy. I hear you say wine and olive oil and... So wine questions would definitely go a long way in winning the Hotels.com award, wouldn't they, Julie? Uh, they will, and I think you'll find that theme throughout the that I'm covering, <laughs> the wine theme. Well, thanks, Julie. Yes, Ireland, you see here on this beautiful panoramic shot why it's famously known as the Emerald Isle with its castles and verdant countryside. <clears throat> verdant countryside. I would say April to October for this destination in all its glory. Uh, many options to consider in Ireland and Today we're keen on the West Coast, so we're going to take you flying into Shannon International Airport with great lift out of the past few years, making it a direct flight from many U.S. cities, uh, just five plus hours over the pond, so not as far as some might think. Several great options, properties nearby with Dromolan Castle, 
I will highlight a couple here. Um, and my personal favorite, the newly renovated Adair Manor. And maybe just quickly, um, you know, we say castles, castles and manors. Uh, you know the difference between a castle and a manor, Mike? Uh, I actually heard this question once, but I don't want to spoil it. Go ahead. No. Well, they they tell us tell me over there that castles are for fighting and manors are for living. That's right. Nowadays, I think they're just living in the castles, yeah, exactly. but you know they they're uh, pretty nonetheless. Uh, so Adair Manor on the right, just stunning. Um, they actually just completed a hundred fifty million dollar renovation. So when you consider Julia, they only have one hundred four rooms. They basically put more than a million dollars into each room. They'll never get that money back, but um, you're gonna you're gonna get great uh, consolation from your attendees. I was there a couple months ago. What it looks like each room had a million dollars put into it. Honestly, it's yeah. just stunning. Think heated marble floors yeah. and the like. Uh, for golf nuts like me, they just added. Uh, they just landed the uh, 2026 Ryder Cup, so they're getting a lot of attention there um, at Adair Manor. Further up the West Coast in Galway County, or County Galway, I guess they'd say in Ireland, is uh, Ashford Castle and another that we highlighted here. So no shortage of outdoor, cultural, unique experiences in Ireland. And honestly, nothing says Ireland to me like a horse and hound welcome as your guests arrive. And when you talk the east side of the island, you can't help but to start with Dublin, which offers a great mix of city and country options from the famous K Club just outside Dublin City to my favorite in town option, which would be the uh, recently completed and fully renovated Shelbourne Hotel, which is an autographed collection. Uh, lots of venue options in and around the city, walking out into the pubs as you've been and, and uh, have experienced or could imagine. Uh, on the left is a picture of an off-site dinner at Christchurch Cathedral from this summer uh, in a program we um, we produced where you can do a cocktail reception in the uh, crypt below the church for a, a unique wow experience for all. I love Ireland, and I suppose it has something to do with being an Irishman. So if you like chocolate, check out Butler Chocolates next time you're there. Okay, very Same good. Well, we're going to stay in Europe for a few more slides. Portugal. Yeah, Portugal, good value for the euro. Honestly, my recommendation here is to get to, to get to Portugal while it's still a good value because mm. like we've seen in so many other parts of the world, it won't be forever. But um, as of right now, I do believe there are bottles of wine that are cheaper than bottles of water in Portugal, mm. hence my wine theme. Um, my favorite, favorite part about Portugal is not just the fact that it's very affordable and there is great lift into Lisbon, which there is, but... I think doing a program here offers this, what I like to call a trifecta of experiences that you can't you know, get in very many places around the world. So that's, uh, Sintra has the beautiful mountains. Kashkais is set on the water here that you can see in this bottom left picture. And then you have the Lisbon city center. Uh, it's a very walkable city with a lot of history and a lot of attractions there. Um, my recommendation is flying into Lisbon and taking the 40-minute transfer to the beautiful Ritz-Carlton Penalonga, which is actually located in Sintra, and you can see that in the top left there. Um, this was really a 14th century monastery complex where monks went to kind of uh, vacation or retreat, if you will. So this main building that you can see here houses the sleeping rooms, restaurants, um, you know, meeting spaces for the hotel, but what you can't see in this shot, um, and I'd be happy to send more pictures, is the monastery and chapel that are actually on site. Mm -hmm. So this is just a fabulous place. It's a walk across the parking lot to this monastery and chapel where you can do a cocktail reception on the lower level in some of the different rooms within the monastery and a dinner upstairs. Um, you know, one of the best parts about this is there's no room rental fee and all of the food and beverage goes towards your minimum. So I love that. Um, if you're looking for an off-site, there's a ton of wineries. This is the Caloris Wine Center where we did these king tables down the middle. It's a very thin room, but with the right uplighting and the right decor, it's just absolutely stunning. Fantastic. Dubrovnik, Croatia, second tier Europe, as Julie mentioned, and the value Mike mentioned too. Uh, you know, back to Ireland. I mean, Ireland was a value second tier destination until just a year or two ago. So these things do ebb and flow, as Mike likes to say. Uh, but we're off to Croatia now, um, highlighting second tier Europe. We settled here with uh, the land of a thousand islands, uh, 
little fun fact there, actually 1,244 islands, islets and crags. So um, yeah, only 48 of them are inhabited. So you can imagine the fun you can have offshore uh, exploring um, uh, the many island options. Great options available uh, beyond uh, offshore exploring the country and, and uh, many incentive quality destinations. But today we settled on Dubrovnik, the southern part of the country known for its distinctive old town in circle with that massive stone wall, your, you know, the iconic picture that was completed in the 16th century, that quintessential medieval walled city made famous again recently with Game of Thrones, if there are any Game of Thrones fans out there. So. Uh, yeah, everybody should take that two hours it will take out of your lives to walk the ancient city walls of Dubrovnik. And uh, we're happy to help you do some fun th things with the group to make that even more memorable. I love it. Sounds good. Iceland is awesome. I think if you have a group between 10 and 100, kind of looking for a short flight to take them a world away, I think Iceland's really worth looking at. And peak season here is June through August. Where temperatures are kind of 55 to 70. And there's literally 21 hours of sunlight during the day. So plenty of time to explore the golden circle on a snowmobile or do some Viking game, team building, hike glaciers, or check out those geothermal baths. The only thing that is not ideal in high season is the northern lights that were on the last slide because those are most prevalent kind of later in the year, September through March, where there's 20 yeah. hours of darkness every day. So just a vast difference there. Um, Hotel Borg is kind of one of my favorites there. It's 56 rooms in a great location, kind of an art deco. There's also a Hilton Canopy and a new Hilton in downtown Reykjavik for groups that are a little bit bigger. The addition. Yeah. It's Good. So as we continue across the Atlantic from Europe, we're now going to focus on Caribbean and Mexico. And we put uh, Los Cabos on the list. While it's hardly new, uh, we just think there's more five-star resorts in Cabo than probably any place on the planet. So uh, you've had one and only Palmilla, Rosewood, the, the, what was the resort at Pedregal, but recently reflagged under Waldorf, as well as a couple of the Auberge resorts like Esperanza. They've, they've been there for a long time, but now we've seen other entrants into the market with uh, Ritz Carlton opening a pr product later this year. Four Seasons just opened uh, just uh, last week, this Costa Palmas resort. So with a swimmable beach too, which is worth uh, mentioning in Cabo because there aren't many of those. There are, I think, four down in the Southern Peninsula. Right. Not, yeah. not many of those. So a lot of that. And then also we put in these two uh, all inclusives. Grand Bayless, we've done many programs at Grand Bayless. Highlighted a food shot because I think what really impresses me about them is their food, which is kind of a paradox for all inclusive. Wonderful food. Uh, LeBlanc uh, hosted a client retreat for us, so we, we, we appreciate their sponsorship and support of the industry. But what we really see with all these options is we feel like it's putting downward pressure on rates in this five star destination. We should say LeBlanc has amazing food as well. It does. It really yes. does. Yes. Yeah. So Caribbean, I think the main thing here is uh, after hurricanes Irma and Maria, it feels like a grand reopening yeah. of all of the Caribbean. So, Yeah, so right from the top, Puerto Rico, St. Regis, Bahia Beach, uh, Puerto Rico, totally on the uh, backswing, all that insurance money here uh, a couple years after those October 17 storms blew through. Uh, great property, wasn't uh, greatly affected like maybe some other areas close by were, um, but with that brand, a very unique experience. The U.S. Virgin Islands, there's, uh, the Ritz-Carlton we have mentioned here, uh, also a big takeaway for me from the IMEX show in Vegas a couple weeks ago was the reopening of the uh, Marriott Frenchman's Reef, um, which is still in, it's interesting, I just saw a press release yesterday, they're, um, they're Still in the Marriott brand, but they've got a new brand like they need a 31st, but hey, Marriott can do what they want. But uh, really excited to see that Frenchman's Reef up on that bluff overlooking the capital city of Charlotte Amelie and all you can do between there and the Ritz-Carlton just further up the coast. And then the uh, just offshore, uh, the other Virgin Islands. And worth mentioning the BVIs too in that area that uh, are recouping from those uh, recent storms. Yeah, I think Anguilla as well, kind of the bigger former Viceroy, now Four Seasons, which didn't have a ton of damage, but is just as beautiful as ever. And then the smaller Malaluhana offering kind of great opportunities out yeah. there. 
Yeah, that Four Seasons feels like an am answer to a trivia question if somebody asked what hotel in the Caribbean had two grand openings, because mm. they did a grand opening, then they got hit by the hurricane, closed down, and did another re-grand opening. Yeah, before you switch, one more comment on Puerto Rico. You know, they've had a great marketing campaign also at, at IMEX, uh, so pleased to see um, uh, them supporting the Ministry of Tourism, obviously in all these islands. That makes it a good reason for us to consider them uh, for our next incentive travel trips. Uh, but when you think Puerto Rico, it's the same currency, don't require a passport, your cell phone's, cell phone's going to work without an uh, international plan. Mm -hmm. All those things make it easier for the right group uh, to have the experience they're after. Agreed completely. Good. Well, the West Indies also out there comprised of kind of the greater and lesser Antilles Islands, um, including St. Kitts, Nevis, and then that Carlisle Bay there is, I think, in Antigua that you visited lately. Great activity options out here. You know, you fly into St. Kitts for both St. Kitts and Nevis. Quick car transfer to this beautiful Grand Hyatt that opened in 2016. Uh, we've done quite a few programs there that have been super successful. Or you can kind of take the Four Seasons private boat transfer to Nevis, where they greet you at the dock with champagne and escort you to your room. 170 rooms there. So two beautiful options kind of out there in the West Indies. Yeah, that Carlisle Bay in Antigua really, I think, is uh, is experiencing an uprising as a destination. You hear of Antigua, Bar Bar Barbados, and um, this West Indies area, but uh, this is a special spot. You can't see on the right, uh, but this bay is protected by a mountain where the prevailing winds are in, so never any um, wind blowing on that beach. All those rooms, and um, I think there's six to each of those units, I believe it's about 80 at this property, it's a leading hotel of the world. And I love, uh, if I digress for just a moment, I love that this is destinations and not really focusing on properties, although we're doing that a couple times here throughout. But, um, you know, we've mentioned, can't help mention five-star properties like you have St. Regis, Four Seasons, uh, leading hotels, preferred hotels, Rocco Forte uh, in Europe and, and many others. Um, but this property is really unique. You walk out your door and you're on the beach and uh, the waters of Antigua are something to behold. Like Let's see, Baja Mar, we've done some programs here, kind of a three-in-one option. Yeah, this one, um, you know, the, these folks in the Bahamas uh, experienced one of those uh, most horrific uh, hurricanes last month, but did not affect Nassau, uh, so two islands to the north were just devastated. Uh, but this Baja Mar property has been on the map now for about five years. Uh, came through some bankruptcy just about 18 months ago, I believe it opened in uh, May of 17. After sitting dormant for two months, I was wondering what would happen since it was about 90% done before it went into bankruptcy. But um, I can assure you it's um, it's a fantastic option and get there before everybody else does. So from this shot, you see uh, they have 2,200 rooms. It's really a resort you don't have to leave. Uh, the two towers in the back are Grand Hyatt's. They take up about 75% of the 2,200 rooms there. Front left is the Rosewood, beautiful five-star hotel within a hotel, and then kind of that contemporary chic SLS, that pink building on the right. But lots of pools, a marine park, uh, great options. And, you know, we, we kind of had fun with this Bahamian playoff here in the top left. Um, lots of great options in NASA and around that uh, immediate Bahamas area that uh, were not affected and would love to um, get a chance at your business. Uh, one of the things that stood out in the right, that uh, casino that connects these Baja Mar properties, uh, largest Caribbean casino, honestly felt like I was walking into the Wynn Hotel. So it's got that kind of Asian red gold. You see it there, influence, really stunning. But even more than that, it was the 40 restaurant outlets. Uh, my favorite, Katsuya, uh, Philippe Stark design. Not only is the food over the top, but uh, you're just going to feel like you're, you're in a six-star restaurant and make sure to try the tasting menu. While we're at the halfway point, we're going to go a little faster downhill on the backside. And I will say at the end of this, we will send out these slides to everybody that's on the call. Perfect. Sub Saharan Africa. Quick run through here. It's I'm pleasantly surprised, kind of the more requests, more interest that we have in Africa. Rwanda and Uganda are really hot spots for kind of the gorilla tracking and rafting right now. Uh, Tanzania and Kenya offering just amazing safari opportunities with the big five. Um, Zambia and Zimbabwe getting a lot of attention lately with the Victoria Falls. And we recently put together an itinerary 
that included the Royal Livingston Hotel, some walking safaris, and Victoria Falls tours. So very cool. Um, Botswana is home to the Ni uh, Chobe National Park, which is one of the greatest safaris out there. Um, you know, we can put together private Boma dinners that are themed with local entertainment. Just a lot of really unique opportunities here. Um, you know, that you, you just things you don't get to do everywhere. You know, Julie, we you know we often see if the whole group's coming from North America that Africa can be ha far and expensive on air. But we have some clients that have a rather globally distributed sales force with a lot in Europe in Asia Pacific and all of a sudden Africa becomes very reasonable. Yeah, and the lift into Cape Town is fabulous. So I think it's a really great option when you've got a global audience. So continuing within this global chapter, we're gonna talk about New Zealand, the Lords of the Ring country. So most of us know Auckland. You know, Auckland has this amazing sky tower where you can see the whole area, see the harbor town. There's a small island off the coast of uh, Auckland called Waiheke Island that has some really beautiful vineyards and wineries. And what really impressed me about Auckland was the dining. It's kind of a foodie scene. And then uh, as much as I like Auckland, I would say if you forced me to pick, I would pick Queenstown of the two, which is Auckland's on the North Island, Queenstown's on the South Island. It's only a town of about 40,000, but I think it, it offers more of that unique, authentic experience that people think of, whether it's Lord of the Rings tour or the home of bungee jumping, where it all began. And then uh, as, as a guy, an adrenaline junkie, I love the shot over jet boat where the boat was going through about two feet of water. I'm not in that picture, but uh, it was an amazing experience. And, and then Milford Sound is really a scenic uh, tour in that region. Uh, let's see, next, Cusco, uh, which is sort of the jumping off point to go to Machu Picchu. You know, I, I think the reason we put this on the list, that's certainly not a new idea, but we always talk internally, we're amazed at how few companies consider it. You know, when you go, go from the U.S. down to Peru, you're largely staying within the same time zones, so you don't have to fight jet, jet lag. On the left-hand side, you see a shot of the Hiram Bingham train, which is definitely the way to get from Cusco to Machu Picchu. Some of the colonial sites, and then uh, I, I was really impressed with these hotels. Uh, the lower left, Hotel Monasterio, a Belmont property, for a long time that had been the traditional uh, go-to group hotel, but the other two are recent openings in the last five or ten years. Uh, but again, it's always on people's bucket list, but we don't think groups are going there often enough. Mike, how many nights do you need to do this destination? Yeah, you know, you're probably going to have to first do a stopover in Lima and do something there for maybe one night or two nights and then Cusco, three nights is, is going to be good, uh, you know, so it's probably a split of those two. Five to six nights, and same uh, time zone uh, for North Americans, so that helps. Malaysia, so uh, you can't overlook Bali, Indonesia, when you're considering this part of the world for sure, but today we take you to Malaysia and exploring the Malacca Straits. Uh, north of Bali, a Southeast Asian country, Malaysia occupies parts of the Malay Peninsula in the island of Borneo, one of Julie's favorites. Yeah, love it. Um, it's known for its beaches, rainforests, and a mix of Malay, Chinese, Indian, and European cultural influences. For me, best food on the planet. Uh, the capital, Kuala Lumpur, also known as KL, right, is a trending option for meetings and events, but you got to go down the coast to the Straits of Malacca, a narrow stretch of water between the Malay Peninsula and the Indonesian island of Sumatra. There aren't many places like this in the world where you can explore elephant sanctuaries up close and personal and these temple caves, or like this 272 steps to climb this Murugan temple. Love it. Bora Bora, I've been a lot of beautiful places, but nothing really honestly holds a candle to the water in Bora Bora. And while we were talking about Cabo having four star or five star properties, I think Bora Bora does a pretty good job of competing, I right. think, with the St. Regis and the Four Seasons. But you know, this Conrad Nui, the new Hilton that opened up there, kind of it's it's a great, more affordable option, but wonderful just as well. Um, you know, I think of all the places that we're talking about, maybe activities are a little more limited in Bora Bora. It's kind of more of a relaxed, laid back. Um, but they do have some great opportunities to hike some of the volcanoes. I got the opportunity to swim with sharks and these stingrays, which I thought was just amazing. Um, you know, and if your group really needs some downtime, why not a hut on the water where they deliver room service on a rigger canoe? I mean, you just really can't beat it. 
Yeah, you know, the, the people over in uh, Tahita and Bora Bora say, hey, just remember we're only two hours farther than Hawaii. So now we're going to circle into kind of the continental U.S. with the deep south, uh, the deep south. Charleston is interesting. Charleston always shows up on uh, Condé Nast and Travel and Leisure top 10 cities. I think they were voted number one this year. We think groups don't go there often enough. Uh, there's a really neat property in the lower right, Hotel Bennett, that just opened high-end luxury. And then also Montage Palmetto Bluff. Michael, you worked with Site Classic. and Yeah, I love this property. It's um, really old style plantation, four mile drive into the property. Uh, so you're really secluded, 20,000 acres. Um, it's tidal on the May River, so just inland in the low country, as you mentioned. So the tide rises, falls uh, every, uh, what, six or eight hours, about eight, ten feet. But you'll see dolphin frolicking for shrimp on uh, it, while you're paddle boarding in the river. It's uh, it's just in, in uh, bald, bald uh, eagles flying overhead. So just something extraordinary, no sound, any traffic or uh, any of that noise we're accustomed to here in the, in the city. Next, Big Island. We all know Hawaii. I find we many times talk to clients and prospects and they say, well, we've already been to Hawaii. And when we ask, maybe they've been to Waihi, uh, Maui, but we say, hey, pick a different island. Do it every three or four years. Uh, it's always a popular destination. We put it on the list for two reasons. I think everybody needs to go see a volcano at some point in their life. And then there are two properties that have recently re, uh, renovated. Weston on a beautiful beach, Hapuna Beach, uh, renovated and is already open, and Aubert's Moanalani will open in November or December of this year. So uh, they're putting a lot into that property. We think it makes it a wonderful option. Yeah, Whistler. Whistler. Yeah, Whistler, one of my favorite destinations on the planet. You know, being from Boston, the gateway to Whistler's Vancouver. I liken uh, the city, the gateway to Whistler, uh, to my city of Boston. Uh, you can split with the two, uh, float plane up into Whistler. Uh, you see a picture of that. Of course, that's going to be um, spring through uh, late summer, early fall. Uh, but you get great properties up there. The village, uh, two mountains side by side, skiing till July in the back. Some of the best snowmobiling for those that don't ski on the planet. Um, and even the summer, you know, beers frolicking, um, downhill uh, biking, just lots of outdoor activities and something for everybody. See, festival spots. This is uh, kind of something new we've seen where you tap into a festival in a local market. Michael, you've done a couple of these. Yeah, this is one of those fresh ideas Bright Spot uh, likes to uh, come up with. I can't say we created it, but, you know, for the right group, right size group, um, we've done recently the uh, Miami South Beach Food and Wine Festival. If you haven't done that, highly recommend February every year. Uh, Austin City Limits, which is currently going on right now in the booming uh, town or city of uh, metropolis of Austin, Texas. Um, uh, the Nashville CMA Festival uh, uh, in June is another great option um, for one of these festivals. And we got one north of the border, too, in Quebec City for Winter Carnival. I've also done Mardi Gras, not for everybody, but, uh, yeah. you know, you can... Uh, you can have some fun tying into the um, the local culture and, and festivals. Yeah, and then Wild West. I guess I never would have guessed 10 years ago that our clients would be asking for tents and dude ranches. Right. But, um, this has become really popular. My favorite of these is the Paws Up Resort in Montana. Um, you know, they coined the term glamping, so they're offering, you know, tents with full size chandeliers and full tub full size tubs to soak in and just a really glamorous experience camping but we're seeing more and more of these kind of resorts pop up with everything from tents to teepees and yurts and all these different types of accommodations i think the great thing about these locations really though or these destinations is the on-site experiences where you don't have to leave these properties to do a cattle drive or archery, clay shooting, fishing, ATV. So I think small groups or retreats, this is really something worth looking into. Yeah, and lastly, we've got European River Cruises, definitely a trend, not just for individual travel, but for groups. Uh, it's gotta be the right size. You know, these, these vessels are typically 75 to 100, maybe a few more staterooms. Uh, there are some that are wider than others, but to get the whole vessel for your group, uh, would be extraordinary. You pack once, you're into these 
Um, you're into these small villages exploring the authenticity of places like on this route, we highlighted the Danube. Uh, and one of my favorites would be uh, Crystal Cruise. It's really a six star experience uh, from um, Vienna to Passau or the whole 10 day from Budapest uh, past Passau. So uh, yeah, old uh, medieval uh, abbeys and um, you know, waking up to uh, scenery that um, you're just not gonna get out in the open ocean. Good, so quick uh, public service announcement. We're gonna do a couple of questions. We're just a few seconds over. You can learn about all of these on our blog at this uh, gobrightspot.com forward slash 20 for 2020. And again, we'll send the slides. If you've got any questions, which we do have several, uh, send them in and we'll, we're gonna hit these really quickly to respect your time. Uh, got a little plug here from our sponsors. You can download <laughs> some of our travel eBooks out of the publication section of our website. And with that, let's see, Julie, we had a question that came through early on about Julia. And I think the air is often through Naples on the other coast and then catching a, a Euro pass over, over the coast or... Uh... Yeah, Naples would be the closest, um, not the biggest, not the least expensive to fly into by any, um, by any stretch of your imagination. But you can do the Euro pass, 30 to 50 euros uh -huh. can get you kind of a beautiful you know, train ride through the countryside and over to uh, to either Puglia or Umbria. Yeah. One of our student listeners did recognize is we promoted really a lot, uh, kind of a theme here was second tier destinations. And with some of those, they don't have quite as great of a lift uh, to get into there. Say so we had a, also had a question about your favorite there in Portugal, Julie, the Ritz Carlton, Penalanga. Was there a second pool on the roof? We're going to have to check. Yeah, I do not. There is not a second pool on the roof that I know of. I'll have to go back and look at the picture and see what that was. You were there for a week. And yeah, I, 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 um, yeah, there should be, but I you, didn't you think missed there it. Is. Uh, <laughs> let's see, you know, maybe another expected one in Africa, any safety concerns? And, uh, you know, I, I think in general, we'd say, you know, it's amazing. I think those places that we're not as comfortable with, you know, we feel more doubtful of, uh, you know, many... We're here in Texas, we're close to Mexico, even though it's got a level two advisory. We're comfortable, we do a lot of programs in Mexico, but we get some clients that aren't comfortable. Alternatively, countries in Europe, like uh, UK, France, uh, Spain, some of those have the same exact same level two warning. So, you know, every place has got some risk, but uh, you know, these, you know, these resorts that we've looked at with clients, you know, safe, they're self-contained, uh, you know that's what definitely else? part of what we ensure. Yeah, the other thing I would say to this is our partners on the ground exactly. in Africa. You know, going from Zimbabwe to the Chobe Desert, you do have to go through a customs checkpoint and, you know, they outline exactly how it's going to work and exactly, so, you know, going into it, they really give you a sense of comfort and they know their stuff. They do this all day, every day, so. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say the same too, Julie. It's a good point. You know, in South Africa, I mean, you go from the airport to your hotel and not want to, you know, not be advised to stop at a red light. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. the way things are there at the moment. But um, knowing where those areas are and having the try to trusted vet, uh, vetted relationships with those to guide you through safely is yeah. uh, is going to be the same there as it would in these other places. Makes a big difference. For yeah, sure. Maybe as we wind this call down again, I think one of the things we're seeing as a trend is people are going a little farther right now. The economy's good. You know, um, airfares are bouncing up a little bit, but people are just they're feeling good, they're investing a little bit more in longer haul air to go to Europe or other global destinations. So again, we'll follow up after this, we'll send the deck and uh, our marketing manager is, uh, has done a, done a, sent a thorough evaluation of all the questions. <laughs> we have and, a winner. Uh, we have a winner named Kay, who we will be reaching out to and sending a hotels.com gift, gift card to keep within our theme of travel today. So thanks for, thanks, thanks for listening in, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Take care.